friends. Welcome to another podcast. I have difficulty talking about it. I have reworked this podcast at least five times. And every time I was dissatisfied with the result. Because this is the thing I talk about every day in room four. Those of you who have been know it well. This is a thing that seems so clearly defined and simple, and yet there is such an enigma in it. The paradox is called old ovum. A paradox related to what we united under the games of fun of the brain. We all know that after 40 years of age, it's difficult to get pregnant, and after 45, almost impossible. People have accepted this and think it's normal, that it's a biological program or just how genetics functions. But that is not true. If you look at history, you will see that there have been pregnancies in this period too. For some reason, something happens so reproduction is diminished. We spoke about this when we discussed the menopause, but let's focus on the egg cell. When I said ovum paradox, the paradox is in the fact that egg cells, just like stem cells, are created at birth. When I speak about egg cells, I also mean sperm and stay immature and undeveloped until the moment they receive a signal that they should start maturing and developing. So all aging processes in the body shouldn't affect them, other than maybe the metabolic processes. Different biochemicals pass through them, but they don't have a big metabolism. They stay small, and waiting for their time to come, just like stem cells. So, the first paradox I reflected on, when speaking about the aging of sex cells, is that no snowdrop or tulip, it is spring, is planted as an old and withered blossom. That means we cannot accept that cells formed by the egg cells could bear elements of senescence or age. Furthermore, talking to myself, I encountered the second paradox that is truly shocking and maybe not one of your doctors or biologists have asked themselves this question. We have one egg cell and one sperm cell. They unite and form an entirely new cell, the zygote, which is the beginning of the organism. There is no genetic program already commenced and ongoing. The genetic program actually begins just now. We have a completely newly formed cell and still this cell dies. Why? What is the reason for this? These are the questions I was trying to find an answer to. I read a lot. I said hypotheses. I argued with myself. Because this is a truth that determines destinies and is related to many plans for life. Because this is my everyday life, my work, and I know how much this means to people. The first hypothesis, the egg cell remains stationary and experiences metabolic processes. But at a certain moment, these metabolic processes slow down with age. Thus the mitochondria, the powerhouse, begins aging. So, the first hypothesis is that it's okay, but 
When it starts maturing, its powerhouse is weak and not functioning so well. And the energy necessary for the fetus to develop, energy that it takes from these powerhouses, is not sufficient. So far, so good. But in assisted reproduction, there is mitochondrial transfer. Yes, it helps in certain cases, but certainly not at an advanced reproductive age. So, this hypothesis is no longer valid. However, it is not entirely moot, because when the mitochondria aren't good, they slow down the process of DNA methylation and demethylation. They slow down the process of chromosome binding in the egg cell. Therefore, in different parts of mitochondria, some are better bound, whereas others are not so well bound. And when the fertilization process arises, and they have to split, giving half of the chromosomes, these poorly bound parts are what changes the genetics of the ovum. You might think, oh, okay, so genetics is to blame for everything? So the binding agent for this, cohesion being one of them, is stronger in some parts and weaker in others? Therefore, genetics is to blame for everything. Genetically speaking, these egg cells are doomed to die fast, for they cannot split their chromosomes evenly. In 90% of the cases, it is true. But there are also instances when we have genetically normal embryos of couples at an advanced age that also die, again, with no explanation. Furthermore, if we accept that all mechanisms in the egg cell are old, that the cytoplasm, organelles and everything inside is not okay, then the so-called pronuclear transfer would do miracles. That is, you find some normal genetic material, take the nucleus out of it, and put it in the donor's cell with its nucleus previously removed. That should solve the issue, but it doesn't. These embryos do not develop and do not reach their goal. What is the reason for this? The reason... When we spoke about the menopause, I told you that the brain makes the decision to discontinue the reproductive function of these cells. It does not send the signal straight to them. This is what I realized in my research, reading through different publications. The signal is sent to the cells that deal with the survival and life of the future maturing egg cell. These are the granulosa cells, the T cells that encircle an immature ovum. These cells are the main ones. They provide nutrients. They send the signal to start maturing. They receive the signal from the brain. When it sends a signal saying, all should die, I'm sorry if you're feeling upset with what I'm saying, but when it sends the die signal, these cells start systematically destroying their respective babies and immature cells. The woman quickly and irreversibly starts losing her cells. That is where these processes enter the energy metabolism, in genetics, in everything. This is a consequence of the signal sent to the cells. So, if we accept that this process has already begun, and we stimulate a woman at 45 years of age or more, 
What I explain, and you will have heard numerous times from me, is that we cannot appeal the verdict. We are trying to save the ones that have survived this signal. We are trying to take the ones that the signal has not yet activated to such an extent, those whose self-destruction program has not yet started functioning. Another thing I'd like to say that is very clear is that there is no way for this signal, once sent from the brain, to be sent back or to be stopped. This is a signal with the conditions of a verdict that cannot be appealed. I told you why it does this in the menopause episode because it believes that reproduction has ended and that this woman should start taking care of the future generations. Or, simply put, it knows that dozens, even hundreds of generations back, these women had to take care of the children, deal with their training and carry out the functions that the missing men had. And that is why it stops reproduction to continue the family line. These are things that have stuck with it for many generations. What is the solution in these cases? First thing we have already mentioned. Have a look at the menopause medcast and you will see that the first solution is that when you have not yet used your reproductive functions, freezing the eggs the very moment this transition process begins is the first thing you should do. And the second thing you can do is, when you're already in this transition period, take supplements and do other things we mentioned in the other medcasts to slow down this aging process a bit. But I say again, it is irreversible. It cannot be stopped. It cannot be postponed in time or temporarily delayed. And this should be clear to all. When we do genetic tests for embryos, when we take out egg cells. Let me tell you this. In an Austrian journal, I saw that in 90% of the cases, the egg cells of women over 45 years of age are fertilized and then do not continue their development. And that is not only due to genetic reasons, it is because at the time of fertilization, this program is not yet active, but later on begins functioning when they start developing into embryos. Furthermore, I wondered whether egg cells, before maturing, can demethylate. To a certain extent, yes. But the process after fertilization is when the methylation of demethylated genes begins. That means that the egg cell or embryo is doing everything possible to survive. But when this program is commenced, when all self-destruction processes are in action, this embryo cannot survive. A few words about men who might be interested to learn more. Interestingly, for men the process is the same. Men above 30 have lower motility. Men above 40 have lower concentration. And with men above 50, concentration lowers and fragmentation increases. Of course, this is all provisional. But the transition for men is the same as for women. 
So the brain tries to make the two sexes similar and to turn them into something almost the same that could serve the future generations. This is the logic. Many men think that for men fertility remains for longer. But that is not the case. Without assisted reproduction, this would be very difficult. Additionally, mutations increase. There are publications saying that at an advanced age, different congenital and genetic diseases increase in men, because alongside the fragmentation, small mutations in separate parts of the DNA, not the whole chromosome, begin. Another important thing to mention, as it is a hot topic, what is fragmentation? It is the separation of DNA strands into parts. Imagine a program or a CD with scratches in different places. Naturally, the program or the file will not run smoothly or will skip. On vinyl records that are back in style, you know how they sound if they've been damaged? The same goes for DNA. When it is separated, the program does not run smoothly. When the sperm fertilizes an egg cell, this DNA is not complete and there are lost strands that the embryo itself tries to recover, therefore slowing down its division, which exhausts its energy and it stops developing. Fragmentation is typical not only for sperm cells, it is also a characteristic of all organs in the human body. And in biology, DNA fragmentation is considered one of the signs of cell death. So, we go back to what I told you in the beginning. Your sperm with increased fragmentation received the same signal as the egg cells of your partner. The brain says, I don't need these cells anymore. They must die. I do not want to end this medcast on a pessimistic note. No. There are means and tools to avoid these programs. When measures are taken on time to protect the germ cells, when supplements are taken to delay the aging process, thus also the menopause can be expected at a later stage. So the brain will also send its signal later. And above all, for those who have missed all these options, I think that a donor program is a much better solution than trying to solve a puzzle with no way out. Thank you. It was difficult to talk about germ cells because it is something I have always wanted to change. Ever since I was a young doctor, I dreamt about making an egg cell or sperm cell younger. But when it has received the signal from its main boss, this turns out to be impossible. And contemporary biology proves it. But every age comes with its joy. So, don't forget to be happy. Thank you.